All right, honor students, we're going to be talking through concept two notes, which are on protein synthesis. So protein synthesis, how are proteins actually made? So the process of reading the instructions on the DNA to actually make a protein. Now the central dogma of genetics, DNA is your instructions, and it's in the nucleus, and it cannot leave the nucleus. But proteins are made in the ribosomes. So it's going to take two steps to actually make the proteins. First, we're going to take that DNA with its instructions and we're going to copy it into RNA. RNA will then be able to leave the nucleus in order to be translated into a protein. So this is the central dogma right here, is this row right here. More specifically, we can say that process of going from DNA to RNA is called transcription, and then from going from RNA to protein is called translation. We're going to go through these two processes today. Now, remember proteins. Let's think back to macromolecules. They are the most versatile macromolecules in living systems, and they serve crucial functions in essentially all of your biological processes, such as they function as catalysts. They speed up reactions. We know that. They transport and store other molecules, such as oxygen. They provide mechanical support and immune protection. They create movement. They transmit nerve impulses. They control growth and differentiation. Hashtag proteins matter. Y'all, they are so important. They could potentially be one of the, I can't say they're the most important macromolecules because they're also important, but proteins really, really matter. So this process is really, really important. Before we can go through the process, there's three essential types of RNA that we need to talk about. First is messenger RNA or mRNA. So back in concept one, when we were talking about the structure of RNA, we were really talking about the structure of mRNA as a single strand with exposed bases. And mRNA is the actual copy of instructions. So it's what's copying the instructions in DNA, and it's what's going to leave the nucleus and then go to the ribosomes in the cytoplasm. tRNA is transfer RNA. This is what's going to bring amino acids to the ribosomes in the mRNA based on what the mRNA says. It's going to bring the amino acids. Remember, that's the monomer of protein. So the amino acids are going to be built into a protein based on what the mRNA says. Last is rRNA or ribosomal RNA. It makes up the ribosomes. That's why I put a picture of ribosomes here. Remember, this is what the nucleolus makes. We talked about that in cells in our organelle um, concept. Um, this is what the nucleolus makes and just composes the ribosomes. So ribosomes are made of proteins and rRNA. All right, so first step in the protein synthesis process is transcription. The purpose is to carry the code or the instructions out of the nucleus. So we're basically making a copy. A transcript's a copy. Remember, DNA never leaves the nucleus, and proteins are made in the cytoplasm by ribosomes. So that's why we have to make a skinny copy of it and then leave. So think, if I want to bake a cake in my house, but the recipe was at my grandma's house in her cookbook, I would have to go to her house, make a copy of the recipe, and then leave her house and make the cake at my house. So that's basically what we're doing here with proteins. This um, step happens in the, in the nucleus because that's where DNA is. And we're going to start with DNA and we're going to end with mRNA. So basically, RNA polymerase is going to bind to a DNA promoter and transcription is going to begin. It's going to unzip the gene that needs to be copied. So it's going to look for... Um, a TATA -ta box, a TATA, -T -A, as a signal as to being where it's going to start transcribing. So we're not going to unzip the whole thing like we did in replication. We're only unzipping the gene that we want to copy, so just a section of the DNA. So RNA polymerase is going to do that. It's going to look for the TATA -ta box as a signal of where to start. It's going to bind to the DNA promoter there, and then it's going to begin doing its thing. And doing its thing means bringing in complementary base pairs according to the RNA base pairing rules. So we're going to bind RNA nucleotides to the exposed DNA nucleotides. And again, we're just using, we're making one single strand, so we're just using one side of the DNA. And we're bringing in uracil instead of thymine. So A's are going to bind with U's instead of T's this time. Once it's done, it'll just release the completed mRNA molecule, and the DNA can zip back up, and the mRNA can leave the nucleus and go into the cytoplasm, and then onto the ribosomes. So, RNA is made in the 5 to 3 direction. So just like with replication, we're using the 3 to 5 end of the DNA as a template, and we're making a 5 to 3 strand. Um, so, similar to before, 
we've got DNA, we're going to unzip it, and then we're going to make RNA, but notice I'm using the 3 to 5 end to make a 5 to 3 end, and then the DNA um, will zip back up and the mRNA can leave the nucleus. All right, practically, what could happen is, is I gave you a DNA sequence, I'll obviously giving you the 3 to 5 end, because that's going to be your template end, you will make me a 5 to 3 mRNA sequence. So very similar, except for instead of T's go with A's, now A's go with U's. C's and G's are still together. All right, that's transcription. Now we're going to talk about translation, which is the second step in protein synthesis, where we're going to actually use that copy of instructions to make a protein. But first, there's four things I want to, um, vocab terms I want to go over before we get going. So genetic code is the code of instructions for how to make proteins. I will always give you a code to look off of, which I'll show you later. Now, on the mRNA, on the messenger, um, are codons. So codons are sets of three nucleotides. We are actually going to read these letters in threes. Every three nucleotides is one codon. And one codon codes for one amino acid. Now, on the tRNA, there's an anti-codon on one end. It is the complement to the codon on the mRNA. So if the mRNA's codon is UCA, the tRNA's anti-codon is AGU. It's basically just the opposite of it, and it's just a way of proofreading when the tRNA brings the amino acid that the codon codes for to make sure it brought the right one before it drops it off. Remember, amino acids are the monomer or the building block for making proteins. So amino acids are going to be brought to the ribosome based on what the codons on the mRNA say. And then they'll be bound together with peptide bonds in order to form a polypeptide, which will then fold into a protein. All right. The purpose is to read and follow the instructions on the mRNA to actually make a protein. It's going to happen in the cytoplasm because that's where ribosomes are. It's going to start with mRNA, and we're going to end with a protein. All right, here's the process. mRNA attaches to the small subunit of the ribosome. Ribosomes have a small part and a large part. This is going to attach to the smaller part. The ribosome is going to read the mRNA codon, so we're going to read three nucleotides at a time, like a triplet, and always um, going in the five to three direction, and we're going to start at the codon AUG. So we're going to look for AUG. That's where we're going to know where to start. The tRNA is going to act like taxis, and they're going to pick up and drop off amino acids that match the codon being read off the mRNA. They're going to keep dropping off amino acids, and the ribosome is going to bind those amino acids together with peptide bonds. And this is going to keep happening until a stop codon is reached. It's literally going to say stop. And then the ribosome will release the completed protein. Uh, well, technically, it'll be a completed polypeptide. Then that polypeptide will be folded in several ways in order to form a protein. Okay, so this is kind of what it looks like when we're interpreting the RNA message into a protein. So I've got my mRNA down here, all right? Notice that my first codon, I didn't start bringing amino acids until I find the AUG. That's where I begin. Then we're going to look up AUG on the genetic code, which looks like this. So A, start in the middle and work your way out. AUG, that codes for methionine. So the amino acid that the tRNA is going to bring is going to be, this would be methionine right here. Now, on the opposite end is the anticodon. It's just the complement. So UAC is complementary to AUG. That's just its way of making sure it brings the right amino acid. Then we read the next codon, which is UCA. I look at my genetic code. UCA would be serine. All right, so this amino acid would be serine. These would be bonded together with a peptide bond. Next is ACU. ACU would be threonine. So this amino acid would be threonine. It would be bonded together with a peptide bond. Next is UGA. That says stop. So this would be where I know that the protein is complete, and then it would be releasing the completed protein. All right, so we're going to be using this. I'll always give you one of these to use to look up your codons in order to determine the amino acid sequence. Okay, so I think if we try it, that'll kind of help you understand what's going on here. So again, I'm always going to give you DNA in the 3 to 5 direction. You would first have to transcribe to find out the mRNA, which will be in the 5 to 3 direction. Then we're going to divide this in threes. You can just look for the AUG. This is luckily at the beginning. Sometimes it won't be. And then from there, start drawing lines every three letters, every three nucleotides. Or you can spread it out just so you have your codon separated. 
and then you'll look up each codon on the genetic code. So AUG is methionine, CGA is arginine, UCA is serine, UGC is cysteine, and UAA is stop. And then we draw a little dash to represent the peptide bond between each of the amino acids. Okay, and that's protein synthesis in a nutshell.